First, though, if you were listening to yesterday's show, you may have heard the Year 4 pupils from Peel Cloth Workers School who are taking on the TT Swim Challenge to raise money for charity. And that charity is Monitors for Kids, and that's raising money to pay for a pain-free alternative to finger brick testing for children with diabetes. The local accountancy firm KPMG is supporting a fundraising event for Monitors for Kids on February the 10th. And Justine Howard uh, from KPMG is with us. And we'll talk much more about the event um, a little bit later, Justine. But first of all, why did you want to get involved? Why did KPMG want to get involved with Monitors for Kids? Um, we um, we have a chosen charity that we um, support every year. And actually the staff voted um, to support the Manx Diabetic Group and particularly the uh, Monitors for Kids campaign. Um, so um, it's it's a it's a group decision really to support it, and I've been on the um, the citizenship committee for for four or five years now, so that's how I've been involved. Wonderful. We'll talk more about what's happening uh, on February the tenth in just a moment. But we are also joined this afternoon by Manx Pro Cyclist Sam Brand, who was diagnosed with type one diabetes partway through his final year at primary school. Sam, thank you so much for taking the time to be here this afternoon. What do you remember about that time around the time you were diagnosed? Uh, not a lot really. Um, I kind of don't really remember a time before being diagnosed now, so um, it's kind of happened as a blur. I had my parents kind of took on a lot of responsibility at that age. I didn't really know what was happening, um, have much experience with uh, diabetes in general, let alone type 1 or 2. So um, it was kind of a, um, a shock because at school I don't think there was anybody else with diabetes, so uh, it was all... Um, sort of a new ball game trying to learn out trying to work out everything from there but uh no I don't really remember a lot but uh I'm still here now so what did it mean for you on a practical level you know on a day-to-day basis because some of the things we've been hearing about is that the number of times you have to do the finger prick test for example do you remember much about that yeah I remember uh, actually the first time I went back into school after uh being diagnosed and um everyone was inquisitive about my um blood monitor so it was kind of like learning to do that I mean at that time I was doing it about 10 times a day um with this new um technology the CGM it's it some of them the one I use takes away the need for testing so I were going from testing 10 times a day to having live feed of my blood sugar continuously throughout the day and how do you get that information uh, I get that information either on an app through my phone or through my device. So it's just in my back pocket. Um, when I'm out riding, it's in my jersey pocket and it's just uh, gives a live stream. Every five minutes I get a, a new reading and it gives trends so I can see if I'm going up or down or, or flat. So for me, it's undoubtedly the best piece of technology that it, that is available. I think there's probably quite a bit of misunderstanding sometimes about type 1 diabetes, but just to come back to when you were first diagnosed yourself, what were some of the things that were happening to you that, that made you or your parents want to, to look into what was wrong? What were some of the symptoms that you were experiencing? Well, it's pretty much the textbook, uh, which is increased thirst, weight loss, uh, just general sickness. Uh, I wasn't really present. I was kind of like just not myself. I was going to the toilet all the time and um, lucky or unlucky, but lucky, I was diagnosed on World Diabetes Day, so there's a lot of stuff in the news. Um, so uh, that kind of gave my mum the inkling that something wasn't right, and those were the symptoms that I had. So um, we kind of got into just have a, a generic blood test, uh, like we discussed before, and um, that's when I was diagnosed. And you were quite sporty already, weren't you, before this this, this happened? And so you must have initially thought, oh, this is all going to stop for me now. I've got to change my life. And But it's not worked that way for you, has it? No, I mean, some of my teammates have had real horror stories. Uh, on the Isle of Man, we have undoubtedly the best um, diabetes care. The, the team over here, especially the youth support team, is unbelievable. Uh, they've given me all the tools to be able to um, get me through every situation possible they've i've gone through um racing triathlon uh, age group world championships to um becoming a professional cyclist so uh they've given me the tools and just up to me to put the rest into practice really and that's hugely inspirational for anybody sort of starting out on this journey to think you know it doesn't mean the end of the things that you're passionate about particularly sports wise not at all. I mean, I always say I do a lot of talks with uh, my job, which is great. You get to get across to those kids who might have that negative uh, input given to them and, and 
the way I look at it is uh, sort of limitations are only yours to put in place. So if you want to limit yourself, it's no one else's business to limit that. So if someone says you can't, it's because they're scared of you or scared of the ability that you have. So if someone tries to tell me I can't, then I'll show them that I can. So um, for me, if I want to limit myself, that is completely fine. But only I have the right to do that. So um, for me to be able to give back to the monitors for kids and help out and, and just these guys give me a lot of inspiration i get a lot from them as probably as much as they get from me so to be able to see the young kids who are going to benefit from uh the work that uh monitors for kids are doing manx diabetic group are doing and uh, kpm are doing doing as well it's absolutely fantastic it, it means the world and that's the thing isn't it i mean that, that phrase even monitors for kids it is the most crucial time isn't it to be able to have something like a, a scan sort of system because of course if you've got a young child and you can have type 1 diabetes from you know sort of the, the start of your life essentially it seems like through the night isn't it when if you don't have these sort of scanners presumably parents have to come in and sort of do the finger prick throughout the night to keep keep an eye on on the kids uh, sugar levels yeah i mean there was times where mum and dad were coming in at 2am to wake me up to test my blood and now it's like it's peace of mind i mean it's not just the value of of the machine itself but it's the the, the peace of mind the the quality of life that you get from having something that's so reliable so you can have it on your phone if you're at school uh, the kids can have the signal sent to their parents as well at home so or to a teacher so it can come through on maybe a class ipad i've heard stories so i mean it it's there and it, it gives you that peace of mind to know that um it's it's tough because at 10 11 12 being diagnosed with a life-changing condition mm. um is it is sort of a very full-on thing so to take that away and to give them that bit more freedom to allow them to be kids is so useful and so helpful it's unbelievable and um, we should say that your parents are in the studio um, <laughs> and it would be great to hear from one of you if, if um, oh, Ali's being pointed at. Ali, would you come and have a quick chat with us if we could just maybe sit you on, uh, on the mic there? Because I think just to really get a, a real sense of what it was like from a parent's point of view, Ali, about sort of having to deal with this. At what point did you realise that there was potentially something wrong? I realised um, when Sam said about the thirst, it's a thirst that you will never have seen before it's like a pint glass gets swallowed in five seconds so like a minute later they're going to the toilets and then five minutes later they're back for another pint of water and I've heard horror stories when mo one mother caught her son drinking the vase a vase of water because it was thirst that you just can't quench mm. And then really? talking about the, the testing during the night and then sort of Sam remembering you having to do that, what, what's that process yeah, like Yeah, it you? was just... Um, and then if it was low, you'd have to try and wake them up to force food into them to try and get them through the night. If it was high, you'd be having to inject to bring his blood sugars down. I mean, when Sam was first diagnosed, everything was different. They injected twice a day in those days before school and after school so we didn't have to do anything at school and then everything has moved on so much I mean I'm not involved anymore I've been able to switch off since Sam just takes it all on board now but these monitors reading those blood sugars 24 7 is just the best thing must have, I mean I don't even know how you got a night's sleep it must have been just that constant worrying I guess it's that constant worrying but you're worrying and you don't want your children to see that worrying because there's no reason why they're any difference wow and it's certainly I mean it hasn't held him back really he's doing all no, right not, not at all hey, not at um, all just remind people where you're up to with your cycling career so um yeah so I've just completed my first season of professional cyclist uh signed a new contract for this year so um i'm just back from a month in spain from training camp and the season starts in three weeks so i was gonna say you have got the most impressive tan line i've ever seen in my <laughs> life because oh, you can awful, tell where you wear your helmet <laughs> i did think at first maybe it was foundation yeah, and you hadn't I just blended it in well. but um uh, let's talk then about this uh, fundraising event for monitors for kids which is coming up on february the 10th justine what's happening 
So um, it's effectively a fun day. We, um, we're doing various um, fundraising for Monitors for Kids throughout the, the year, but this is the first one. Um, it's starting at 11 in the morning, finishing at 4. We've got um, entertainment for the kids. We've got Cookie and Candy's Children's Entertaining doing a ma- uh, magic show. We've got Unity Dance doing a dance. Doing There's going to be crafts, face painting, um, cakes, <laughs> the lot, and bouncy castles, of course. You can't not have bouncy castles. Um, so it's going to be a really fun day, um, and we're really, really delighted to be supporting um, Monitors for Kids um, for it. We're gonna, they're going to have a presence there as well, so we'd really love it if as many people could come down as possible. Uh, tickets are um, £5 per person, but you can just pay on the door as well, so there's, there's, no, there's no need to. It's at uh, HBN Primary School. Um, in Douglas and um, yeah hope to see a lot of people there and it's great just being able to pay on the door and then all the activities are free yeah so that's kind of the key thing because because yeah we do sort of require um, adults to pay as well but but there's so much included for that price I know having a young child myself that you go to these events and you end up paying so much money for like five minutes on a bouncy castle and then you know another five pound to get your child's face painted but everything's included the only thing you'd have to pay for is, is food on Wonderful. top of that. Um, if the adults pay, does that mean they can go in a bouncy castle? <laughs> um, I'm afraid not. I'm very um, small. There, I'm is, gonna... <laughs> <laughs> there is an age limit, I'm afraid. So, But if you come after hours, we might let you okay. come and bounce on it. Oh, you look so sad about that. <laughs> oh, no. Um, I'm just intrigued to come back to Sam, because Sam, I want to know wh- what your training regime is like and what it actually takes to compete at your level, because it must be pretty punishing. Uh yeah, but it's quite weird because I really enjoy it. So, um, <laughs> for example, in, in, in a training camp, we might be starting going up to sort of big big numbers a week. So um, the last week in training camp was about 30 hours. Um, we're up to six hours on a bike at a time. It's uh, not often a rest day, but it, it at training camp, it's a bit different because you get the chance to ride with your teammates. I mean, it's not like other sports where you train every week with your teammates. I see my teammates, apart from races, maybe once, twice a year if if that so um it's the chance to get there learn skills and together ride together as you would in a race so it's kind of getting ready for the races um but yeah up to 30 hours a week it's um it's big uh big commitment i mean like my last race it was uh nine days it was uh a thousand miles 1600 kilometers over the nine days um it's it's punishing but i mean it it's satisfying I, i absolutely love it and um also, the team that I ride for, Team Nova Nordisk, is uh, the world's first all-diabetic professional cycling team, so everybody on the team is diabetic. Um, that makes life so much better. We have a mission, um, not saying other people just ride the bike for riding the bike, but I do it because A, I love it, and B, we get this mission to inspire, educate, and empower all those around the world affected by diabetes. And, and around the world, there's about 430 million people um, who are affected by diabetes, and um for me, it's one step at a time. So to be able to be involved with Monitors for Kids and the Isle of Man is change one person's life. I mean, it's so humbling to be able to affect one person with a smile, with um, just with something so simple. And bringing that all back to, to the Monitors for Kids, it was launched uh, by, in June last year by um, by parents of children with type 1 diabetes. Um, their intention is to raise £120,000 over two years to give all under 16s uh, access to continuous monitors um which for me to be able to put my name to to be able to put my face to is unbelievable it's it's just something that i have such a passion because i mean if i had the technology that is available now when i was a kid i mean it would have made life that much easier so to be able to help make life that much easier for other people now is part of the job and that's part of my mission as what i want to do as well so you're um, quite yeah. an incredible ambassador, I think it's better to yeah. say. Absolutely unbelievable. Um, and in terms of inspiring the next generation of cyclists, I mean, I think we've had a couple of pretty good cyclists uh, yeah. from the Isle of Man <laughs> over the years. But, you know, what is it about this place that really does churn them out? Uh, it's never an easy ride. Um, it's always windy. There's <laughs> up and down. I mean, you never... There's no. <laughs> All my teammates are like, oh, so we're going to go out for an easy ride, grab some coffee and cake, and it's like an hour and you're just riding on the flat, and here we don't have that. So for me, it's always hard. Even when it's easy, it's hard. So um, you're constantly... But 
whenever anyone goes, oh, do you want to go and live in Spain? I'm like, well, no, because just here is perfect for me. Uh, I love riding here, love training here, love seeing the people here. I mean, familiar faces everywhere. Uh, it's a nice break from professional cycling when I come back and I can just relax in into the Isle of Man. It's just where I want to be. Um, our sports editor has been in touch to say you can't have Sam Brand on the programme and not ask him about the story about the Commonwealth Games road race. Uh, OK. Is that Chris? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not going to divulge okay. that, but yeah, his second name's Cave. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, um, yeah, so um, mum and dad flew all the way to Australia to watch me. Um, we were quite active at the start of the race as a team. Um, I was crashed in 8K, I think. Um, then I had to chase back on. So I was chasing back on and then um, I had a mechanical. I basically um, snapped my bike. I put the rear derailleur through the wheel for any bike <laughs> um people out there but uh i then was on a hill and um i was like my mum and dad at the finish line is there anyone who could let me borrow a bike and this this guy just was like oh you can use mine so i left my bike with him took his bike and did a lap i uh, got to the start of finish told mum and dad but i'm the sort of person who won't stop until i'm told to stop so i carried on i got back to the hill and then i got all these cheers from the local aussies about 300 <laughs> off them um on the top of the hill so uh, i got back to the the start finish the next time they said i had to withdraw from the race so i did and then i was lucky enough to get the opportunity to go back up and get my bike back so we switched over and uh it gave me a, a big smile to be able to show that i wasn't going to give up but also uh that someone was willing to lend their pride and joy to me to allow me to continue my dream so that was really nice that was a fantastic story because um, i think you spoke to chris not long after that happened and that was pretty some pretty good audio yeah. there from the mm-hmm. games um and just finally i mean you've got fairly sporty parents really um so i mean they've just encouraged you in in everything you do yeah i know they've uh they've it's all because of them is where i'm at now basically um they're in the studio so i have to say that but uh <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I couldn't do anything without them. They've given me uh, not only the support, but also all the tools that I needed. If there was never really a problem, I mean, I uh, gave them pretty hard times sometimes, but uh, they uh, have always stuck there, given me the ability to chase my dreams. I mean, they put me through uni for four years and I got a degree and then I come back and say, oh, I want to be a professional cyclist and like, oh, here we go. Um, but they they helped me they supported me they got me out of the house for another 18 months and I'm living in America so that was all right for them but no that I couldn't do any of this without them and it means the world to have them uh, oh. push me oh Ali that's lovely oh, isn't that it is, that's all right. <laughs> I have to say just say that sport is the answer to everything it really helps the mental attitude and just because you have diabetes or other illnesses as well it shouldn't stop you getting out and doing something even if it's just for leisure Brilliant. do it justine just remind us of the uh, the fundraising details of kidtopia coming up so um it's um 11 a.m to 4 p.m uh sunday 10th of feb so next weekend um and um it's five pound a ticket it's up at hbn primary school hope to see everyone there i'll uh, i'll get told off if i don't take this chance to mention sort of the difference between type one and type two because it is a really big a really big difference i mean they're labeled both as diabetes but there is a significant difference type one diabetes which i have um is autoimmune so i can eat cake and i can (laughs) eat and drink what i want i just have to monitor everything that goes in so um like lifestyle is sort of the type two diabetes which is more older age but uh just for type one diabetes is uh, this situation with the the young kids so it's uh no one's fault it's not self-inflicted so um there to be able to help a group of people who need that help is what we're doing here so no thank you